Good evening. Thanks for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking tonight. Stock market snap, a three-day losing streak thanks to a late rally. But shares of new age companies like Paytm and Nike continue to fall. Share sales by anchor investors via block deals and fears of more stake sales spook investors. The union government is unlikely to launch any new subsidy scheme in the upcoming budget. Sources say the government is also considering a 31,000 crore rupee scheme to boost green hydrogen. Protection and preservation of the environment will be the big priority. That's a CNBC TV 18 budget exclusive. Think digital. In your mission of making India a clean energy leader, digitization will play the role of a force multiplier. 5G technology can serve as the backbone of many, many industries. Reliant Industries Chairman Mukesh Ambani says the revolution in clean energy, bioenergy and the digital sector will be the next force multipliers that will transform India. Urges Young India to lead the clean and green energy revolution. Tata Group Chairman N. Chandrasekharan says tech will be a key driving advancement that fuels the next revolution. Workforce crunch at Air India. The airline grapples with a shortage of pilot and cabin crew ahead of its international expansion plans. Air India offers cabin crew taking retirement by the end of November to extend their service by two months more as their replacements have not been found yet. The Australian Parliament ratifies its free trade agreement with India. This is India's first FTA with a developed nation after a decade. Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal says the pact will give Indian industries access to cheaper raw material. The group of ministers on levying GST on online gaming casinos and race courses fails to arrive at a consensus on valuation. Sources say members from UP and West Bengal prefer different rates for games of skill and games of chance. Other members are open to taxing all three at 28%. Telecom players turn in their budget wish list to the finance minister, request a refund of 32,000 crores in accumulated input tax credit. Also seek zero customs duty on network equipment that's critical for the 5G rollout, lower license fee and the removal of GST on various spectrum charges. Telecom companies seek parity, want licensing norms for OTT services such as messaging, email, video calling, also bad for KYC norms for OTT players, make a pitch against administrative allocation of spectrum for private networks. The Supreme Court refuses to grant an urgent hearing to a plea challenging the union government's decision to extend the electoral bond sale window by 15 days. The Apex Corp says it will hear the petition along with other pleas against the electoral bonds that have been pending since 2017. The death toll from the earthquake in Indonesia's Java Island rises past 260. Many more feared trapped in rubble. Hospitals overwhelmed. Thousands left without electricity. Let's start with the last street. A last hour recovery on the streets saw the market snap its three-day losing streak. So the Nifty and the Sensex gained close to half a percent. The Nifty now back above the 18,200 mark. PSU banks led from the front and the index was up 1.5 percent. Infosys, Reliance, TCS batting for the bulls. HDFC Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank and Bharti Airtel were the laggards today. Meanwhile, shares of new age companies, Paytm and Nike, continue to decline as share sales via block deals by anchor investors and fears of more stake sales continue to spook investors. Vivek Ayer is standing by with a list of blocks, deals that have been seen in these new age companies. Vivek. Well, that's right. So what we've done is we've analyzed the underperformance of these new age businesses, given the sharp selling pressure that we have witnessed. So, you know, let's have a look at the four recent listings where you've actually seen uh, the fact that the anchor investor or the lock-in has actually expired. So first up, you know, the one that we're looking at is Nika, you know, this particular stock, uh, uh, despite the fact that it's not completely, you know, given up as some of the others, this particular stock ever since the lock-in has expired has seen a block deal in every single session after that. The announcement of the bonus issue actually compounded the confusion in terms of how exactly the selling would materialize. And, you know, if you're talking about some of the key uh, sellers, every single day, you know, we're actually seen some significant block deal happen over here. Lighthouse, at this point of time, we understand, uh, has completely exited from their stake as far as Nika is concerned. Uh, uh, TPG Growth was another significant seller from Nika. The other one that we are looking at at this point of time is Delivery. You know, the lock-in for this particular stock or this particular uh, ended on November 21st. One of the major investors, Carlyle, 
exited half their stake. They had around 5.2% stake. They've exited 2.5% stake. So they continue to hold around 2.5% stake. And you know, this is the fear that we are seeing most of these companies actually having at this point of time. The third name that we are looking at uh, after delivery is a PB FinTech. You know, when you're talking about PB FinTech, remember, this itself was a disruptor in the insurance space, but after the listing, the company also saw quite a bit of disruption happening in terms of the government coming up with new norms, especially from IRDI. This particular stock has been an underperformer and has seen significant selling pressure, especially from Tiger Global uh, 8 holding that has sold a significant chunk of its holding. Lastly, coming to the biggest underperformer, we are talking about Paytm. Paytm has seen a biggest decline in terms of the selling pressure since its listing. The lock-in ended on November 15th, and when you're talking about the stock performance, it's down 75% from its IPO price. Remember, the IPO price was 2,150. Alibaba.com you know, was um, the one that continues to have a significant stake. Um, and also, when you're talking about uh, their stake, it's a little over 31%, both of these entities combined. Vivek, many thanks, and those stocks continue to be under pressure. In fact, staying with Nika, Nika's chief financial officer, Arvind Agarwal, has resigned. Agarwal will leave the company and step down from his role on Friday. Nika informed the stock exchanges that he will be pursuing other opportunities in the digital economy and startup space. Oil prices rise after Saudi Arabia denied reports that it was discussing an increase in supply with OPEC and its allies. The Saudi energy minister said that the kingdom was sticking with output cuts and not discussing a potential increase in production. Remember, we had seen a sharp fall in crude prices on the back of reports suggesting that there could have been a deal. The Saudis denying that. Think big, think clean, think digital. That's the key message from Reliance Industries Chairman Mukesh Ambani to students of the Pandit Deendayal Energy University addressing their 10th convocation. The Reliance Chairman said the revolution in clean energy, bioenergy, and the digital sector will be the next force multipliers that will transform India. He urged Young India to lead the clean and green energy revolution. Tata Group Chief N. Chandrasekharan also addressing the gathering said technology will be key in driving advancements that fuel the next revolution. Pointing to 5G, the Internet of Things, and Industry 4.0 as the next big pivots of transformation. Think big. Be an audacious dreamer. Every great thing ever built in this world was once a dream thought to be impossible. You have to own your dream with courage, nurture it with conviction, and realize it with bold and disciplined action. It is the only way you can make the impossible possible. Two, think green. The clean energy movement is about adopting a green mindset. It is about being sensitive to Mother Nature. It is about inventing means to harvest its energy without harming it. It is about ensuring that we leave behind a better and a healthier planet for future generations. And three, think digital. In your mission of making India a clean energy leader, digitization will play the role of a force multiplier. The progress that is being made in technology is tremendous and it is going to significantly accelerate every science-based transformation in every discipline. 5G technology will provide and serve as the backbone for transformation of many, many industries. Okay, Shambani and Chandra, with less than three months to go for the union budget, the Finance Ministry's consultation with various sectors on in full swing. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman chaired a meeting with experts of the agriculture industry today. The gathering was also attended by the Minister of State for Finance, Pankaj Chaudhary, the Finance Secretary, Tiva Somanathan, and other economic advisors and industry representatives. And in our budget, Connor, the upcoming budget may not see any new subsidy scheme being launched, though a final call is yet to be taken. Remember, uh, always a political call at the end. Pariksha Tuta joins us now with more. Pariksha, take us through what the priority areas, the thrust of Budget 2023 is likely to be. Well, the government has been receiving uh, uh, recommendations from various quarters, including the industry, and the, the clear recommendation is don't have any new subsidy schemes. So the view in the, within the government right now is that let's not go ahead with any kind of new subsidy schemes, but we, we believe a final call could be taken in the next few weeks. Uh, at the same time, green hydrogen, climate action will be a big priority area. The government is considering a 31,000 crore outlay for green hydrogen mission, which could be announced in the budget. This could, announce, this could include an outlay for electrolyzers and the rollout of 
uh, green hydrogen for different sectors. Uh, at the same time, there will be a significant allocation for renewable integration to support target for 500 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel energy capacity by 2030. Mission life will be a big priority according to sources. Remember, lifestyle for environment. This was a mission uh, launched by Prime Minister Modi and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres in October. Recently, the center has published a list of 75 climate-friendly practices under the mission Lifestyle for Environment. There are specific outlays for different ministries for implementing this program that are being discussed right now. We believe that the budget will put a lot of focus on how this uh, mission will be rolled out over the next two years or so. And the government would like this rollout to be on the lines of the Swachh Bharat mission as well. Right. Mission life on the lines of Swachh Bharat likely to be a big focus area of Budget 2023. Parikshit, many thanks. And staying with the budget, the telecom industry has submitted its budget recommendations. Ashmit standing by with more. Ashmit, uh, what's on the wish list? Well, the budget may be a couple of months away, but it seems that the telecom companies are quicker off the blocks to relay some of their concerns to the finance ministry. In fact, we understand that a few representatives from the sector had visited the finance minister yesterday and shared some of those concerns. There are five key issues that have emerged. The number one is, and this is not a new demand, the telecom sector is demanding uh, that there be a refund of accumulated input tax credit of 32,000 crore rupees. The sector says that at a time when the sector is looking at a huge capex, this infusion of 32,000 crore rupees uh, will be critical and will work wonders for the sector, for the industry. The number two demand is uh, that for as far as 5G rollout is concerned, critical infrastructure and critical equipment has to be imported. That currently sees a levy of uh, customs duty levy of 20%. The sector is demanding that be cut to nil to zero. And that is the second key demand. The third is abolishment of the use of contribution. Uh, what the telecom sector argues is that the use of contribution uh, should be done away with at least till as far as the use of fund is not exhausted and that the license fee should be brought down from 3% to just 1%. Uh, the number four demand is removal of GST as far as government dues are concerned. Uh, the telecom sector is saying that no GST should be levied on dues that are paid to the government in the form of the license fee, the SUC or even spectrum payments uh, that these payments uh, GST should be abolished and finally uh, there should be a grant of input tax credit uh, especially on critical uh, equipment that is mounted on telecom towers. These are five demands that the sector feels will be critical in the months to come as far as 5G rollout is concerned and as far as digital infrastructure of the country is concerned. As with many thanks, that's the telecom sector's wish list. An industry body, FICI, has asked for an extension of the sunset date under, con con the, under the concessional tax regime by five years. The Finance Act of 2021 had extended the sunset date under the concessional 15% tax regime by just one year to the 31st of March 2024. Now, FICI says it is necessary to make India more competitive as an investment destination and viable alternative to China as a global manufacturing hub, and hence a five-year window should be provided other than then increase this uh, i mean the extend this um, concessional tax uh, taxation regime in drips and uh, uh, drabs it's it's much better to have a clear clean five year window and say this is the opportunity for for india to 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 climb the manufacturing bus which is what the what the prime minister has made clear that we missed the bus once before and we will do everything that it takes to 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 make sure we don't uh, you know we we don't miss out again well, let's move away from the budget corner to exclusive news from the aviation space. We learned that Air India is hit by a severe crunch in critical workforce like pilots and cabin crew. And this comes at a time when the airline is expanding its fleet and adding more international routes to its list. Madhiha is standing by with more. Madhiha, so expansion plans, but shortage. Uh, how are they planning to solve this? Well, we learned there are two key areas of workforce shortage that Air India is grappling with. First is a severe crunch in trained and experienced pilots. Sources say Air India needs about 200 senior pilots to operate the 20 new weekly flights it has announced for Birmingham, London and San Francisco. We learn the airline is looking to overcome the shortfall by onboarding foreign pilots who come at a much higher salary as compared to Indian pilots. Remember, Air India is inducting more wide-body planes into its fleet for the new long-haul routes. But induction of these planes would need more pilots. And finding experienced pilots for planes like B777 is not easy as only two airlines currently fly these planes, which includes Air India and Vistara. Coming to the second issue, which has to do with an acute shortage in cabin crew staff. 
Sources say about 450 cabin crew members have opted for voluntary retirement with their release date on 30th of November. We learn that the airline has offered them a choice to extend their service by another two months as it is unable to find their replacement at this stage. But that's not the only issue. According to sources, the induction of wide-body planes and additional flights to US and UK would also require around 900 to 1,000 additional crew members. Sources say the airline had trained about 200 crews since the Tata group took over, but they haven't been deployed yet. Why? That's because these crew members don't have the necessary documents like the US visa, without which they cannot be deployed on flights to the US and beyond. We asked Air India about the shortage in crucial manpower, but it is yet to respond to our queries. Madhiha, many thanks for joining us. A quick check of some of the key headlines. Tonight, the Australian Parliament has ratified its free trade agreement with India. This is India's first FTA with a developed nation after a decade. Commerce Minister Piyush Goel says the pact will give Indian industries access to cheaper raw materials. Exact date mein do एक तो हमारी कैबिनेट भी हो जाए उनके एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल से भी अप्रूवल हो जाए फिर कस्टम्स दोनों के उनको कुछ हार्मोनाइज करने पड़ते हैं इंटीग्रेट करने पड़ते हैं सिस्टम्स को उसमें थोड़ा समय लगता है और क्रिसमस की छुट्टियां आ रही हैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया तो इन सब को मध्य नजर रखते मैं आज कोई डेट नहीं दूंगा अगले 3-4 दिन में मैं मेरे काउंटर पार्ट के साथ और फाइनेंस के साथ चर्चा करके फिर हम इस पे कोई डेट निर्धारित करेंगे फॉर टू लॉन्ग the business-to-business -business relationship has lagged the rest of the relationship. And this agreement will put an end to that and grow the sort of relationship that will secure lasting friendships uh, in the decades to come. Indian and Australian consumers will both benefit from the tariff and cost reductions on imported goods into their country from each of us. The group of ministers on levying GST on online gaming casinos and race courses fails to arrive at a consensus on valuation. Sources say members from UP and West Bengal prefer different rates for games of skill and games of chance. Other members are open to taxing all three at 28%. So the logjam continues. The Supreme Court has refused to grant an urgent hearing of a plea challenging the 15-day extension for the issuance of electoral bonds. The bench led by Chief Justice Diva Chandachur says the Apex Court will hear the plea on the 6th of December along with a batch of pending cases since 2017. The Delhi High Court has rejected future groups plea seeking the termination of arbitration proceedings with Amazon. The court has paved the way for Amazon to continue the proceedings before the Singapore International Arbitration. Center and the ongoing tussle with the future group, the proceedings will commence on the 28th of November. Telecom companies seek parity and want licensing norms for OTT services like messaging, email, video calling. Companies also bat for KYC norms for OTT players and make a pitch against administrative allocation of spectrum for private networks. To say that they are different services is incorrect. Uh, the reason why I am saying it, that all communication services, be it from OTT or TSP, are today engineered on the IP networks which are set up by the uh, telecom network. In, in a submission to, to the government, we have said that they should bear, but uh, we have not yet come out with a model, but <coughs> because first the principles have to be put right, if the government principle is then wants to expand on that, then we will suggest models uh, which the government can consider. Uh, primarily, uh, all three of us will get involved if the model is to be suggested. Uh, OTT, TSP, and the government. Parks, shopping malls, and public places have been shut in Beijing as China grappled with a nationwide spike in COVID cases. The number of new COVID cases in China is at its highest since April. Yunus Yun joins us now with the latest. Yunus. So Beijing says that as of Thursday, officially, we now... Uh, we'll have to present a negative 48-hour COVID test to most uh, public places. However, in reality, we've already been asked to present, for most places, a 24-hour negative COVID test as part of this whole um, mix of inconsistent and confused enforcement of COVID regulations. Uh, Beijing isn't, of course, the only city that's been tightening its uh, COVID controls around the country. The case count for daily infections is now nearing 29,000. So this is tiny in a global context, especially when you consider the size of the population here. But for China, the authorities have called the situation grim. 
So around Beijing, uh, cities such as Tianjin and Shijiazhuang have been ramping up mass testing. Um, down in the south, uh, Guangzhou says that they're going to be imposing tighter lockdowns for more districts. Uh, Chongqing out in the west uh, has, been, has been urging its residents to stick by stricter stay-at-home orders and also not to travel out of the city. Eunice Yun, many thanks for joining us. We will head into a break, but changing tastes and priorities are transforming big, fat Indian weddings. How exactly? We'll tell you when we return. Gujarat goes to polls in two phases, with the first phase of voting set to take place on the 1st of December. The Aam Aadmi Party is trying to make inroads in the state, which has been a BJP bastion for over two decades. My colleague Santhya Gora caught up with the Aam Aadmi Party's Gujarat chief ministerial candidate, Isudan Gadvi, on their poll plank, their message for voters and more. So, Aam Aadmi Party's entry in Gujarat is the most interesting aspect of Gujarat Assembly elections 2022. And their CM candidate is actually a former journalist. And right now, we are being joined by Ishudan Gadvi himself. Thanks a lot for talking to us, Ishudan. Aam Aadmi Party, if I talk about the Aam Aadmi Party, when the party came to the start, party with a difference, you know, that we are different, our perception is different, our mind is different, our focus is different. But in the Gujarat election, the top leaders have also changed their minds. Whether it is saying Arvind Kejriwal that you have a note on Lakshmi Ji and Ganesh Ji's photo, or that you have a soft Hindu in Gujarat, then you are also in the main political parties in the main political parties. How are you doing? Look, we are doing the work of the government. We don't have the role of the government, we don't have the role of the government. So Arvind Ji came to a thought that if it's a good thing, if it's a good thing, why do you think it's a good thing? No, 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 no. So Diwali was the time of Dhantaras, they had to pray for it. After praying for it, they had to think that Ghanapati Ji, because we do any good work, we first do the Ghanas Ji. And we do Lakshmi Ji, so they had to think that we call it Lakshmi Ji, so if we call it Lakshmi Ji, then 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 we call it Lakshmi कि इसमें भाजपा को दिक्कत क्यों है? मैं ये बोल रहा हूँ कि ये इतना अच्छा विचार अरविंद जी ने रखा है तो भाजपा को दिक्कत नहीं होनी चाहिए। देखिए भाजपा की छोड़ दीजिए लेकिन जनता की अगर बात करें तो चुनाव के वक्त में इस तरह के धार्मिक विचार आना थोड़ा सा सस्पेशियस तो लगता ही है। खैर म so, polarization is a matter of time. We want to accept this thing or not to accept this thing, it's a different thing. No, this is only the work of the government. Okay, let's go to the next question. You have a freebie and welfare scheme, this debate is going on. But where will the money come from? This is the same thing. Now, look, we don't give Mercedes. This is also the same thing. We don't give Mercedes a car. Correct. Because it's not their need. We don't give Mercedes or not. Basic is necessary. Don't give the money. Don't give the money. Don't give the money. Don't do the money, I'll come to the next 2027 when I'll come to the next 2027. So I'll give you this money, I'll give you this money, I'll give you this money, and everything will be free, but there will not be one rupee. Well, that is the Ahmadbi Party's Chief Ministerial Candidate for Gujarat. Wedding season is back in 2022, promises more vibrant affairs than seen in the last couple of years. But while COVID restrictions may have been relaxed, Shilpa Rani Peter reports that people's tastes and priorities have changed, and so too weddings and related celebrations. The big fat Indian weddings are back. But after two years of lockdowns and restrictions on guest lists and venue, demands and tastes have changed and both wedding planners and guests are coming to terms with these changes. The traditional wedding with numerous rituals and events attended by hundreds of guests is not in vogue anymore. Weddings are becoming more personalized in keeping with millennial tastes driven by millennial priorities. A survey of newlywed and soon-to-be-wed millennials by The Wedding Wire showed that 43% of the respondents wanted a mid-scale wedding with 250 to 500 guests and nearly 9% wanted less than 100 guests at their weddings. We had an average wedding of 1,000 people at the pre-COVID times. Now that has gone down to almost 50%. So people have started being selective in calling their guests. That's definitely a shift we are noticing. Otherwise, everything else remains the same, same grandeur, 
सेम बैंड बाजा बारात budgets too have come down especially with millennials choosing to contribute to and in some cases completely shoulder the expenses wedding wire says that nearly 41% of the couples surveyed want to spend less than 10 lakh rupees for their wedding and nearly 19% are okay spending between 10 to 15 lakh rupees this pension for smaller gatherings and smaller budgets is not a trend sparked by the pandemic though it has accelerated the shift Inflation is rising and with it costs of food decor and other related services. Experts say that on an average planning a wedding has become around 30% more expensive over the last 2 years. Now this rate has gone up uh, to quite an extent. I mean depending on the hotel so whether it's a luxury uh, segment of ours whether it's a premium hotel or a select service brand of ours the rate has gone up anywhere between 20 to 30%. बार उन पांच लाख शादियों का जो जो पैरामीटर हमारे सर्वे में आया वो दो लाख की जगह तीन लाख रुपए हो गया तो वो स्पेंडिंग के पैरामीटर्स बढ़ गए हैं क्योंकि महंगाई बढ़ गई है साइज एंड स्केल आर नॉट दी ओनली एस्पेक्ट्स दैट आर चेंजिंग Another interesting trend that's emerging from this wedding season is that millennials are moving away from tying the knot on auspicious days and instead are picking less popular dates. Now this the industry says is not just driven by convenience but also allows couples to plan their dream wedding at 50% of what it would otherwise cost them. It's clearly the dawn of a brave new world where weddings are concerned. In Mumbai, Shilpa Rani Peta And with that it is time for us to wrap up this edition of India Business Hour. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. The news continues on CNBC TV 18.